data nerds, Google just released Gemini. It's powered by its most advanced model, Ultra 1.0, and I've been putting it through some tests, so we're going to be going over everything you need to know for this. And mainly, does it even compete with ChatGPT's competitor model, GPT-4? So getting into it. Gemini Pro has been behind its BARD model since last December, but that's only the middle tier model. Ultra 1.0 is their new glorified premier model. And today, they've rebranded their chatbot as, confusingly enough, Gemini. And like all companies that are throwing around the term AI these days, you have to pay extra to get access to this advanced model of Ultra through Gemini Advanced. Google's killing me with these renamings. So what can you do with this chatbot bard? I mean, Gemini. Let's say you're a student trying to work smarter, not harder to get into your top colleges. Well, for your AP coding classes, you don't even have to code anymore. Just throw in your questions and bam. Once you're done, have Gemini draft up an email to your teacher on how revolutionary your homework is. Since you have all this free time, you can now plan your trip with the boys down to New Orleans before you go off to college. And speaking of colleges, why even waste time selecting one anymore? Just have Gemini do the SWOT analysis for you. Even more revolutionary, it can even export these results as a table to Google Sheets. Okay, so generating tables is sort of kids work these days when dealing with these large language models. But I did run into quite a few limitations when actually testing Gemini out. Especially when compared right next to its competitors like Microsoft Copilot, you start to see that Google is trying to play catch up. All these things that they're claiming Gemini can do, Microsoft Copilot can already do that right inside the apps. Right now, Gemini isn't available inside of any Google apps. You have to work through its chat interface just to try it out. For our previous example with the student, you could use it inside of Microsoft Teams to attend all your classes and then summarize them with your notes. Goodbye classes. And Gemini in the chat doesn't even support very basic things like uploading files other than images, a very basic feature that this thing should have. Now, I did find in testing that Google did have extensions where you could actually link Gemini to your Drive account and actually connect to different files, but this was sort of limiting, but we'll get to that in a second. So how do you get this Gemini model that I keep shitting on? Well, they're integrating it through their Google One plans and not only giving you access to Chatbot, but also upgraded storage. For 20 bucks, you get their AI Premium account, which gives you access to Gemini Advance and also Gemini and Gmail docs and more, which is yet another rebrand from Duet AI to Gemini. Now, I only have the Premium plan but Google decided to give those that have this plan access to Gemini Advanced. Well, at least until the summer. Then I gotta upgrade. Speaking of rebrands, this isn't abnormal of Google doing this. All these tools here were rebrands over the years and have been quite successful, so maybe Google knows what the science is behind renaming it. With the Gemini rebrand, it looks like it's taking a page right out of Microsoft's book. It's just like they use Copilot to rename all their different AI tools. Google's doing the same as them. So where do you access Gemini? Well, the first place is your browser. And this access is available to more than 150 countries, including Canada, which apparently didn't have access to this before. Additionally, you can access this on your phone. For Android users, there's a dedicated app called Gemini that you can go to and access this model. For iPhone users, they're being a little lazy. They're including it as part of the Google app that you can toggle on. I don't have access to it yet, but apparently it's slowly getting rolled out. And because this model is no longer limited to just your computers or phones, also Google devices, it looks like they're gonna be rebranding Google Assistant as Gemini. Hey Google. Are you renamed Gemini? I'm more into astronomy. One of my favorite constellations is Orion the Hunter because I'm a hunter of information. So what's all the hype about with this Ultra 1.0 model? Well, if we look at the top chatbot arena leaderboard from Hugging Face, we can see that GPT-4 currently tops the list with Gemini Pro following shortly behind. However, it's been claimed this Ultra model is performing way better than any of these other models. Google released this fancy marketing campaign claiming it exceeds GPT-4's performance. But there's a couple of problems. Google's marketing nerds switched around some of the numbers. For this, they were looking at one of the most prominent benchmarks, MMLU, which is designed to test across multiple domains and formats, everything from basic geography to advanced physics. Anyway, for this fancy graph, they compared the chain of thought reasoning of Gemini Ultra to five-shot analysis of GPT-4. Basically comparing two separate tests. If we look at only the five-shot analysis, GPT-4 actually beats Gemini Ultra, which conveniently they don't make in blue. Oh, and this isn't the first time in this whole launch of Gemini that Google has tried to deceive us. All right, testing Gemini. Here we go. Tell me what you see. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. It looks like a bird to me. Once again, Google's marketing nerds turned fact into fiction by making it appear that it was possible to interact with Gemini in real time. But Google's data nerds, who are apparently good friends with the legal nerds, actually provided the truth with this interaction by showing how they provided text prompts along with images to then get those responses that were then shown in the video. Anyway, that demo and all the different benchmarks that Google's been providing, along with OpenAI, 
are all just hearsay. Let's actually jump into testing it out and seeing how it performs. I took it through multiple tests, including image analysis and coding, all the way to things like data analysis and Google Sheets. So let's start with the coding question. I provided it an image of a database diagram that I wanna run a query across. I made it complex enough in nature that it would have to actually query across different tables. Very quickly, it provided this result along with a short analysis of its thought process for it. I copied the results and then trying them out, it finds out that there's no such table as job post fact. Investigating it, I find that it's job postings fact. So it just got the table name wrong. Providing the error message it gave me, basically a bunch of nonsense results and nothing I could do to solve it. So I had to provide it the diagram again and ask it, hey, is this the correct name of the table? From there, it upgraded the query to include the correct table name. Running it again, I get a new table that it doesn't recognize, which is skills. So I had to go back to Gemini, provide it the picture and ask it to correct it, which it still didn't fix. Going back and forth again, I finally got the answers that I wanted. So this took like five generations for Gemini to get it correct. When I provide this exact same question and image to ChatGPT, I got this query result and we got right in the first try. So it's not looking too good for Gemini. The next test I wanted to do was analyze something like a spreadsheet. Now the way to access this is by using the extension at Google Drive. And from there you can access any file inside your Google Drive, or at least so I thought. So I have a, this sheet inside of my Google Drive that I want Google to access. I started by simply just asking what spreadsheets do I have? And it said I only had one spreadsheet in my entire drive, which isn't correct. And it linked me to a Google Doc not a spreadsheet. So I asked it to find the sheet and provided the name. Note I didn't use the extension operator here, but it still did a search nonetheless. Anyway, it said there's no spreadsheet titled this. So at this point I was just getting annoyed and I went to the share options and got the link and then pasted it into there. After this, it appears that it was able to read the sheet and provide a basic analysis of what it contained. But other than that, it wasn't really helpful. I asked it to perform analysis and it came up with a game plan for doing this. But then whenever I asked it to actually do it, it says it cannot access the specific contents of the spreadsheet due to privacy concerns. But it was nice enough to show me step-by-step step how I could potentially do any of these calculations with something like a pivot table. So I have this compared to ChatGPT. Similarly, it says I can't directly access or download content from external links, including Google Sheets. It then just says, hey, paste in the CSV. So that's what I did. And it went through and provided a complete and really in-depth analysis, looking at all the different columns, how to clean it up, and even some key observations. Now I'm a little biased in this area because I got a course on ChatGPT for data analytics, which is free, and you can access it via the link below. And we'll call out, shout out to the people that have purchased the course notes and certificates for this course, as they help directly fund making more content from this channel and making it ad free. All right, next up is Gmail. And I had it read through my inbox and find all the highlights. And to my surprise, out of all the different features I've reviewed so far, this one I was most surprised with. I was even able to call out specific emails in my inbox and have it summarize it for me so I could get through it a lot quicker. And then finally I had it look into one of my inboxes to see where I needed to reply to someone and have it draft a response which I can conveniently just draft in Gmail and send it right on over. For ChatGPT, it wasn't really surprised with this as it can't connect to your Gmail or any external services. And it doesn't even look like there's any GPTs to actually support doing this as well. So finally, Gemini gets a win. All right, let's get into some video analysis. Using the YouTube extension, you can provide a URL of a video you want to look up. So in prepping for this video, I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything of Gemini. So I provided it other YouTube videos that were already out on this. And for this, it provided a pretty in-depth analysis of what's going on here. Although for some reason it confused the YouTuber with Bard and kept calling it Bard throughout this. And apparently Bard concludes that Gemini Ultra 1.0 is a promising new language model that has the potential to compete with ChatGPT. Now it did provide a follow-up question asking if I want to know more about Gemini Ultra or ChatGPT. And I said, hey, provide me more about Gemini Ultra. And I could see it started to go off script and was not providing me actually relevant information from the YouTube video. So it had to be very specific on where you want those results from. If you're gonna use YouTube, use that ad extension to make sure Gemini uses it or just specify from the video. Now to no surprise, ChatGPT can do this using a GPT. I didn't even provide it a prompt. All I did was it provided a link and it provided things like a takeaway and summary and fancy enough, provided this diagram inside of this GPT, which details the flow of the video itself. So already we're seeing the power that Gemini needs to learn from this on building their extensions. All right, the final extension that I tested was Google Maps, asking it to make an itinerary for popular things to do in my neighborhood. And at first it only listed locations and the times they were open. So I prompted it further asking to provide an order of how I should visit this, assuming that I was doing it this afternoon. And it starts off in the morning, providing an itinerary but it does provide all the different locations. And then from there, a plan to move from each one of these locations, which 
Conveniently, it has all these different things in Google Maps. Now, moving to ChatGPT. Inside the core model, it doesn't have access to things like maps, but I was curious how it would respond with the same prompt. Interesting enough, it provided almost the exact same locations as Gemini, which I'll recommend. And this time with the prompt, it actually started in an afternoon and it provided an hour by hour plan of how I can visit all these locations. With surprisingly, a distance between them. When I double checked these results, it was pretty damn accurate only 0.3 miles off. So I was pretty blown away that this model was able to understand distances, even though it doesn't have any access to a map. All right, so what are my final thoughts? Well, if you can't tell already from this review, I'm gonna be sticking with ChatGPT. Don't really feel like Gemini is really up to the task yet for a few main reasons. One, it's limited extension support or basically lack of GPTs. Two, it has problems connecting to files and can't even upload a file. Three, it's subpar at reading images and actually extracting insights from it. And four, custom instructions. I can't even provide Gemini a consistent set of instructions to provide responses to me. I have to do this in every new chat, but Gemini is faster. And if you have a premium account already, you have access to it, so go for it. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. With that, I'll see you in the next one.